Welcome back everybody. Today's class is going to be level one, sequence three of the handout that I have given you. Um, today you're going to need two blocks, um, some blankets to sit on, and possibly a chair. And if you may need, you could also use a belt. Uh, but we're going to try to not use a belt today. So let's go ahead and get started. So now just sitting on top of your props, sitting with your legs crossed, and now move the buttock flesh out and back. And now let the tailbone release into the blanket so you start to feel the front of your hips lift up. And now lift your chest, roll your shoulders back, and then join your palms together in front of your heart. And now close your eyes. So as you still get the tailbone to go down into the blanket, Stern of chest lifted, outer corners of the shoulders rolling back, and now release the back of your arms down to the floor so your shoulders move away from your ears. And now relaxing the face, move the head slightly back. Let your gaze go down to behind the cheekbones. Now we'll chant the sound of OM together. Now on exhalation, release your head down towards your hands. Release your hands onto your lap. Inhale, lift your head and slowly open your eyes. Okay, so for today's first pose, we're going to be doing Urva Hastasana. So you're going to need to move your props off to the side, including your blankets. So for Urva Hastasana, Urva meaning upward, Hasta meaning hands. So we're going to first start in Tadasana. I'm going to step back a little bit so you see the hands a little more clearly. So now standing Tadasana, toes and heels out. Let the thigh bones move back. Take the top of the buttock down towards your heels. And now on an inhalation, lift your arms up alongside your shoulders, in line with the shoulders. Turn the palms to face up from the root of the arm. And now on an inhalation, keep the legs moving back, buttock down, inhale, lift the arms up. So now keep looking straight forward so that your chin does go down, so then your back tends to round. So keep the head in between the arms as best as you can. And now as you press the feet down, lift the arms up. Feel the sides of the ribs lift and the waist elongate. And then release. Okay, so now from the side, we're gonna do it once again. You can stay forward, I'm gonna to turn to the side. So now I want you to watch here. Toes and heels out, legs move back. Even let the buttock pop out a bit. And then keeping the legs where they are, top of the buttock down. Lift the chest. On your inhale, take the arms out to the sides. Turn the palms to face up. So as you roll the arm, let the armpit area of chest, armpit area of chest lift here. Lift this up. And then lift the arms up. So now as you press the inner edges of your feet down, still keeping weight in the heels, lift the arms together. Reach up for the ceiling. But notice how my body does not tilt. I don't come forward. I don't throw my arms back and my stomach forward. Be aligned over the feet. 
Connect the wrist to the shoulder, to the hip, to the heels. Be in one even plane. And then release. Okay. Now we're going to do a pose called Utkatasana. Here's actually very helpful to have a chair. With your chair, and I'm going to show you from the side so you have an idea of what we're going to do. You're going to sit in your chair. Now, Utkatasana, some systems call it chair pose. Actually, Utka actually means fierce. It's actually called fierce pose. So watch as I sit in the chair, very much on the edge. Okay, I'm not sitting back and my thighs are kind of resting. The thighs have to be free from the back from the chair. So now as I sit, I'm going to hold the chair. Bring it here. We're going to work on this today. Okay? So now, sitting in your chair, be on the edge, feet are on the floor. Now what I want you to do is I want you to walk your heels back so the heels are actually levitating off the floor, but your ball mounds are on the floor. Okay? So you can see how my heels are slightly lifted up. Hold on to the chair first. So I want you to lift your chest. And now, what you're going to do here as you exhale, keep the feet where they are, and now try to press the heels down into the floor, but lift your chest. Heels down, chest lifted. So now you feel how the legs have to work a little bit more in the pose here. Good. And then release. Now from the side, when, I was, when you see me from the front now, watch your knees. So as you hold the chair, press the feet down. Don't let the knees go too far out or too far in. Keep them in line with the feet. The feet, the knees, and the hips all in a nice straight line. Now as you press the heels down, lift the chest once again. And now as you keep pressing the heels down, on an inhale, take the arms out to the side, palms up. Press the heels down even more, tailbone towards the back of your knees, and now lift the arms up. So can you still create that lift in the sides of the trunk like you did in Urdhva Hastasana, even though your legs are bent? And then rest. Okay. Third time. <laughs> I'm going to show you from the side. Now, if you are tall, you may need to lift the seat up a little bit higher by putting a blanket on the seat. Okay. I'm only five foot two, <laughs> so this is perfect for me. But now, first I want to set myself up so I let my heels just levitate. I'm going to stand up. So now as I start in Urdhva Hastasana, upward arm pose, I keep lifting the sides of the trunk, tail going down, thighs back, but now watch. I keep my trunk lifted, keep my tailbone moving down, and now as I bend the legs, keep the head and chest up, Lifting up through the arms and see, the chair is going to be back there somewhere. <laughs> okay, tailbone down, tailbone down, tailbone down, tailbone down, and then you can rest. Okay? So now, we all do. Heels levitated. Stand up. Inhale the arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. As you lift the sides of the trunk, tailbone down. Top of the buttock has to go towards the chair. And now as you keep lifting the trunk up, take the tailbone and the top of the buttock down, bend the knees, hips, ankles, and you're gonna find the chair. Keep looking straight ahead, straight ahead, straight ahead, straight ahead, straight ahead, and then rest. Okay. Now, that pose you definitely do not want to do if you're menstruating or if you're expecting. It's very um, energetic. <laughs> okay? Now what we're going to do next is Uttita Trikonasana. So you can put your chair on this side. Now all you need is two blocks. But like in the last videos, if you do have trouble reaching the blocks, it's okay to keep your chair out. Okay? 
But now the blocks are going to go to your left and right side. You're going to stand slightly in front of the blocks. Now from here, step your feet wide. We're going to go to the right. So turn your left toes in, your right leg all the way out. If you're using a chair, the chair should be in front of your right foot. The block should be behind your right foot. Now, same thing here. Even though the leg is turning out from inner to outer, this outer foot's pressing down, top of the buttock going down towards the floor. Inhale the arms up. Now you're gonna keep them at shoulder height. Now, as you lift the sides of the trunk, just like you did in the last two poses, keep this lifted in here. Top of the buttock going down. Now, on an exhalation, as you press into the outer edge of your left foot, reach out to the right. Reach towards your chair or towards your block. Keep the side of the trunk long. Keep that Urva Hastas in the chest. And now, as you take the hand down to the block, or your leg, or your chair, be here. Breathe first. Relax your eyes, relax your jaw. Be in the legs. Keep turning the right leg from inner to outer, pressing the outer edge of the left foot down, knees straight. Keep your chest lifted and keep your chin away from your chest. Now on a inhale, you're gonna reach up with your left hand to come up and out of the legs. Relax your arms, turn your feet to face forward, and rest. Now you're going to go to the second side. So now your right leg, turn the right leg in, left leg all the way out. Same thing, roll the right, left leg from inner to outer, pressing through the outer edge of your right foot. Top of the buttock down, chest lifted. Inhale the arms up. And now as you exhale, Keep reaching out through your left arm. So notice how my left side does not collapse. I actually take the rib cage down first, then the shoulder, and then the hand onto my prop. Your right arm comes up. If it's uncomfortable for your shoulder, you can keep your hand on your hip. Perfectly fine. So now as you're here, keep the knees straight, rolling the left leg from inner to outer, outer edge of the right foot pressing down. Keep your chest lifted and take your chin away from your chest. Take the head slightly back. Now come on out. Reach on up with your right hand. Inhale, come on up. Relax your arms. Turn your feet to face forward. We're gonna do it one more time, but now you're gonna work with the trunk. So not only do you have to extend the trunk up, there's a little bit of a turning of the rib cage. So now, once again, left foot in, right leg all the way out, using your chair, your blocks. Inhale the arms up. Same thing with the legs. Rolling from inner to outer, outer foot pressing down on the left side. Lift the sides of the trunk up. And now what I want you to do here is take your right ribs and move them more towards me. Roll the right ribs a little bit more towards me. And as you come down, keep thinking of taking these right ribs towards the screen, right ribs towards the screen, and then take the hand down. So now that you're here, same thing, still being firm on the legs, top of the buttock moving away from your lumbar spine, and still taking those right ribs towards the screen, the left shoulder slightly back, and avoid keeping your chin, move your chin away from your chest. So feel not only the extension of the trunk sideways, but also the expansiveness of the front of the chest. And then on the inhale, come on up, relax your arms, feet forward, second side. So now right leg in, left leg all the way out. Inhale the arms up, still being in the legs, top of the buttock down, chest lifted. And now take the left ribs towards the screen a little more. And as you extend out through the left arm, keep taking the left ribs towards the screen. And then take your hand down to your prop. So now that you're here, knees straight, 
Sides of the trunk still extended, but taking the left ribs forward, the right ribs slightly back. Move the chin away from your chest. And just be. Breathing in and out through your nose, relaxing your face. And now to come on out, reach up through the right arm. Inhale, come on up. Relax your arms, turn your feet to face forward, and heel to the legs together. Okay. So now the next pose is called Utita Parsva Kanasana. Utita meaning extended, like Utita Trikonasana, Utita Parsva Kanasana. Okay? Extending. Parsva means sides, Kona means angle. So it's an extended side angle pose. So now, when you come into this pose, let's just watch here first. So when you come into this pose, it looks a lot like triangle pose. It starts off exactly the same. So now the ribs are turning, but now the only difference here is now I'm going to bend the knee. Like a Virabhadrasana 2, which is in the, I believe the last syllabus we did. So now as I bend the knee, I keep turning these ribs towards the camera. I extend, I turn the ribs, and then I take the hand down to the floor. So now, if you need to, you can have the blocks handy. Okay? I'm gonna turn mine down one lower. So now, once again, take the feet wide. Wide stance, three and a half to four feet apart. Too close, it's gonna be very hard to bend the knee. And another thing I wanna point out is you do not want the knee to go over the toes, okay? So now, inhale the arms up. Turn your left leg in, right leg all the way up. So it's just like triangle pose. So now as the top of the butt goes down, turn the right ribs towards the camera, towards the, the screen here. Now, as you press through the outer edge of the foot, bend the right knee. Bend the right knee, turn the right ribs towards the screen. Right ribs towards the screen, extend upward through the arm. So you start to feel the side lift and turn. Lift and turn bending the knee. And now take your hand onto whatever prop you need, or if you can, you can reach the floor. Keep your hand on your hip first. So now as your knee is bent, notice how my shin is straight up and down. My knee does not go over my foot. It stays right over my ankle. So now as I keep lifting this armpit up, turn the ribs towards me. Be here. Now come on up. Lift your left arm up, straighten your leg, ah, triangle pose. Inhale, come on up. So now once again, feet forward. So now we're gonna do the second side. Turn your right leg in, turn your left leg all the way out. So now as you inhale, lift the arms up, same thing here. Turn the left ribs towards the screen. Left ribs towards the screen, lift the sides of the trunk. Lift up, turn. And now as you bend the left leg, keep turning the left ribs towards me. Bend the leg into a square. And now as you keep turning the ribs towards me, extend through the arm, take your hand onto whatever prop you need. Be here, keep your right hand on your hip. So now as you keep this knee into a square, keep your chest lifted, Sides of the trunk also extending away from your outer right foot. Turn the left ribs towards me more. Take the knee towards your back arm. And now to come on up, reach up through your right arm, straighten your leg. Inhale, come on up. Relax your arms, turn your feet to face forward. So now for the full pose, now you're gonna turn left leg in, Right leg all the way out. Inhale the arms up. So now as you keep pressing through that outer edge of the left foot, bend the right leg into a square. Right leg into a square, turn the right ribs towards me more. And now as you keep extending like you did in triangle pose, lengthen those ribs. Keep the side lifted but turning. Lift and turn, lift and turn. Take the hand down, hand to your hip. So now as you sit deep in the pose, knee at a 90 degree angle, knee over the ankle, 
knee moving back into your forearm, turning these bottom ribs towards me, top of the buttocks still moving away from your lower back. And now with your left arm, have your palm face your hip. And now on an inhale, take the arm forward and right over the ear. So now as you reach through the left arm, press the outer left foot down and feel that sense of extension all through the left side of the body. But keep the right knee moving back into your forearm. You have to come on out. Triangle pose. And then inhale, come on up. Relax your arms. Turn your feet to face forward. And rest a moment. If you have to, you can bring your feet together. Second side. So now turn your right leg in. Left leg all the way out. Inhale the arms up. So now, as you start to take the left ribs forward, bend the left leg. Left knee back, left ribs forward. And now extend through the sides of the arm. So get that trikonasana feeling, turning the ribs forward, knee back, and then float the hand onto the prop. Keep your right hand on your hip for now. And now keep the knee at a 90 degree angle, knee back, ribs forward and also extending through the trunk. Lift that whole side of the trunk up. And then taking your right arm next to your hip, straight arm, and then circle it forward and then over your ear. So now as you press the outer right foot down, reach through the right arm. Keep your left knee moving towards the hand on the block, turning the left ribs forward. Now to come on out, triangle pose, press into your feet, inhale, come on up, relax your arms, turn your feet to face forward, and then heel toe the legs together. Rest in Tadasana. So the fifth pose we're going to do is called Vimanasana which I actually believe is translated to flying chair. <laughs> so for Vimanasana, you do not need any blocks. I wanna actually show you first. I'm gonna show you from the side so you have a very clear idea of what we're gonna be doing. So as I separate the feet, notice the heel to heel alignment. So now as I turn my legs, it looks just like triangle pose from the side. Top of the buttock still going down, but now here's the difference. So now I'm going to bend the knee that we did in the same last pose, right? But now uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start to turn my back leg, turn my trunk so I face my knee. Okay? So from the side, it looks like this. Right, so here's Virabhadrasana 2. So now as I start to turn this leg, I turn towards my bent leg. Top of the buttock still has to go down, my chest still has to lift, and we're here. Okay? All right, here we go. <laughs> so now, feet wide, three and a half to four feet wide stance. Too close, impossible to do it. Take the feet wide. Okay, so now as you turn your left leg in, right leg all the way out, so it looks similar, right? We've been here already. Lift the sides of the trunk, keep taking these right ribs towards the camera, and now as you bend your knee, keep these ribs moving forward, knee moving back, okay? So it looks just like you did before, but now here's the difference. This leg has to start to roll in. So now as I start to roll that thigh in a little bit, I'm gonna to turn towards my bent right leg. Arms out to the side. So now these right ribs have to move back, left ribs have to move forward. Inhale, come back up. Feet to face forward. Relax your arms. Now second side. Right leg in, left leg all the way out. Inhale the arms up. 
So now as we do the same thing, we're going to bend the knee, keep the knee moving back, 90 degree angle, perpendicular shin. But now to initiate the turn, this right leg has to roll inward. And as I roll the leg in, I turn towards my bent leg. Keep the sides of the trunk lifted, pressing the outer edge of that right foot into the floor. And then inhale, come on up. Turn to face forward. Relax your arms. Bring your feet together. Okay. Now, that pose is actually going to carry into Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1 pose. So for this pose, you start in Vimanasana, and then you work your way into the full pose with Urdhva Hastasana hands in a sense. So now watch here. As I step legs apart, okay? Left leg in, right leg out, here. Turn, and now watch here, same pose. Now I'm gonna turn the arms, palms up, and I lift. And as I lift up, I take the head looking in between the palms of the hands. Notice how my back leg does not bend. My front leg is at a 90 degree angle. And then inhale, come on up. Now, if you do have high blood pressure, it's okay to leave the hands on your hips because your heart rate will go up. All right, so if you have high blood pressure, keep your hands on your hips. Don't worry about taking them up. <laughs> all right, so now let's all do Feet wide, left leg in, right leg all the way out. Inhale the arms up. And now as you exhale, bend the right knee. Keep that outer edge of the left foot pressing down. Now, you're gonna to start to turn the left leg, roll the thigh in, so now you're turning towards your bent right leg. Square your chest with your front knee. And now, if you're okay with this, arms out to the sides, roll the palms up. Roll the entire arm from the socket up. And now on an inhale, lift the arms up. Keep pressing through the outer edge of that left heel. And now lift the head to look in between your arms. Tailbone down. And now on an inhale, arms out. Turn your face forward, bring your feet together. Relax your arms, and then bring the feet together. And rest. Now we do second side. So now start from Tadasana. So let your heart rate relax. In the step or jump the feet apart. If you're jumping, fingertips together, knees bent. And then as you bend, bent knees, and then extend the arms. Okay? Don't jump with straight legs, bent legs. Now turn your right leg in, left leg all the way out. And now square your chest. On an exhale, bend your left knee. Keep pressing through the outer edge of the right foot. Now to initiate the Vimanasana turn, roll the right thigh back. Pivot and turn towards your left leg. Make sure that your knee stays in that 90 degree angle. Tailbone down, chest up. Turn the arms from the shoulders. And as you keep pressing through that outer right foot, on an inhale, lift your arms up. So lift the sides of the trunk up, just like you did in the very first pose. Keep lifting the trunk up as you descend deeper into the legs. And if you can, look up between the hands. And then release the arms, straighten the leg, turn to face forward, relax your arms. Okay. Now, one more time. <laughs> so one, now, left leg in, right leg out, wide stance. Okay. And now turn, bend, I'm sorry, bend the knee, turn towards your front leg. Keep that outer left foot pressing down. Palms up on inhale. Lift the arms up, and if you can, look between your hands. If not, keep the hands on the hips, it's okay. Head forward. Inhale, come up. Relax your arms, turn your feet forward. 
And now right leg in, left leg all the way up. So now as you bend the knee, now turn the back leg in. So now you're facing your bent left leg. Turn the palms up. And on an inhale, lift the sides of the trunk up as you descend the hips. Outer edge of that right foot pressing down. Inner edge of the left foot pressing down. And then arms down, shoulder height. Turn to face forward. Relax your arms. Bring your legs together. Now to rest. I'm going to take downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. So, hands and knees. If you have shoulder injuries from last pose, you can turn the palms out. Okay? So have your wrists slightly in front of your armpit, your knees directly underneath your hips, toes curled under, press into your feet, inhale, come on up. So now same thing you did in the last poses, lengthen the sides of the trunk. Even though your hands are pressing into the floor, imagine somebody pulling the arms up. So lengthen the arms. Keep your head in between your arms. Once again, don't allow your chin to go towards your chest. Keep the knees straight. And then on an exhale, release the knees back down. Pause here for a moment. And then one more time. So once again, roll the inner arms, inner arms towards your outer arms. So the inner arms go towards your thumbs, outer arms towards your outer hips. Toes curled under. And now keep your elbows straight on an exhale. Come into down facing dog once again. So keep your head, ears in line with your arms, lengthen the sides of the trunk, and from the hands, draw the outer hips back. Press the hands down, draw the outer hips back, roll the inner thighs back. And let the face become quiet. Let your breathing become deep. Nice, slow, soft exhalations. And then slowly bend your knees and come down. We're going to do a pose called Chatus Padasana, which I believe means four limbed pose. So, to do the pose, you have the option of using blocks or from the floor. Okay? But both poses are going to be done exactly the same way. So, I will demonstrate first. So, you're going to lay down on your back. Let me see if you can see me clearly here. So you lay on your back. If you need blocks, I'll show you what to do with that. So I want to bring my heels close enough to my buttock so my back of my thighs and the back of my calves actually kind of touch. So now I'm going to turn my big toes in slightly, so they're slightly pigeon-toed. And then watch what I do here. With the arms, I'm going to press the back of my arms down to the floor. And as I do that, you see how my chest kind of coils? So now I can lift my armpit chest. And now as I press into the inner edges of my feet, press the back of my arms down, I'm gonna lift my tailbone and my buttock up. Now, if it's a little difficult to get up into the pose, here's how you can utilize your blocks. You can make it like a wedge sandal, <laughs> okay? Make sure that your foot is firmly on the block, toes in, heels out. So now with the feet slightly higher than your hips, it'll be easier to get the legs to come up. 
I mean, the, sorry, the hips. Once again, keep the arms near the side ribs, press the back of the arms down, and now lift your armpit chest. To even feel that, watch what I do here. As I press the elbows and shoulders down, I can take the arms wide. You see how my chest opens? It's like an accordion. So now as I keep that, I press into the inner edge of my feet, I'm gonna lift the tailbone up first, get the tailbone to go towards the back of my knees, and then as I lift the back of the thighs up, lift the middle buttock up, but get the top of the buttock to go that way towards the heels. And then you're here. So now you can't see me, do not turn the head. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Press the inner feet down. Keep thinking of taking the top of your buttock towards the back of your knees. Keep your knees moving towards each other. So the back of your sacrum spreads. And now press the back of the arms down. Keep lifting and coiling your chest and lifting the middle buttock up. And then to come on out, roll down from the top spine. So first top spine, middle spine, lower spine, and then lastly, the sacrum comes down and rests. When we come up a second time, now you're going to try to interlock your fingers on the floor, behind, underneath your back, okay? So now, toes turned in, same thing. Let the elbows be near the side ribs, press the back of the arms down, Coil your armpit chest, and now on an exhale, lift the sacrum, lift the tailbone, lift the hips up. Keep pressing the inner feet down so your inner legs become more active. Tailbone towards the back of your knees, middle buttock lifting, and now take your arms along the floor. If you can reach your sticky mat, grab onto the sticky mat, and now roll onto the tops of your shoulders even more. Press into your feet, draw your knees towards your chest. So you start to feel yourself roll onto your shoulders more. Now you can take your hands, interlock your fingers behind your buttock, underneath the buttock, and now press the arms down. Lift the chest. And then to come out, release your hands. Roll down from top spine middle spine, lower spine, and lastly, let the hips rest on the floor. And rest. Now, for the next pose, we're going to do Adho Mukha Virasana to help to release the back. So for this pose, if you need something, a little cushioning underneath your knees, you can definitely use a blanket. Have two more blankets handy. You're gonna open those up. Into the child-sized yoga mat, okay? Roll them both up nice and tightly. And then place that mat vertically in front of you. Now for Virasana, you're going to kneel down. So we've done this pose, especially in the restorative class. So you have to make sure that you take care of your ankles. The buttock has to be sitting on the heels. And then you're going to come forward. So let your abdomen be in a negative, an open space here. So if I move the blanket, my knee out to sides, notice how my abdomen goes towards the floor. Okay? It's not on the bolster. And then lengthen and turn your head to the side if need be. And let the arms come forward and let the back just release. moving the buttock down towards the heels. And then turn the head. And 
then turn your head to the first side. And then once again, turn to the second side. And then turn so that you're facing the blanket directly. And then walk your hands back towards your knees. And then as you come up, let your head go up last. And then to relax, to release the back of the knees, you're going to come forward into a table position and just curl your toes under. Extend your leg back and now press through the heel to open up the back of the knee and go back and forth as many times as you need to. And now, last but not least, you're going to take Shavasana. You have a choice of either doing Shavasana flat on your back, okay? But if your lower back is a little temperamental and laying with the legs straight, does it feel so hot? Here's how you're gonna do Shavasana in a chair, okay? You're going to have the chair with the seat facing away from you. Now, having a folding chair is definitely a bonus. Even if it's not a backless chair like we use in the Yengar, as long as there's a space here to get your legs through the chair, that's perfectly fine. Now, when you're going to do it with the chair, you're going to come close to the seat, lay on your back, pull your legs in so your lower back goes towards the chair. Lower back descends, but your, I'm sorry, but the tailbone is kind of curling upward. So you feel the sense of release here. Then you can extend your legs through the seat but make sure that the whole shin and heel are in a flat plane. Your heels are not lifted up, okay? Arms out to the side. So that's Shavasana with the seat. But otherwise, we'll come into Shavasana on the floor. So start with the feet together, knees together. So the idea here is that you want to draw a line from the center of the legs up, like a big gigantic zipper to the tip of the nose. That has to be in a straight line. So as you start to come back, lean back, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, and then follow that straight line as you come down. Right? From the toes all the way to the tip of the nose, take the arms out to the side, and then one by one extend the legs, and then with the little toes drop to the floor. And rest. In and out through your nose. Soft, smooth inhalations and soft, quiet exhalations. Let go of the feet. Let the little toes drop towards the floor. Be resting on the outer side of the heel. the legs naturally turn out let the front hips release towards your back hips 
then the go of the abdomen let the abdomen recede in towards your spine and let your spine just release as you exhale sure that your palms are facing up. Fingers are just gently, naturally curled. Let the palms recede into the floor. Let the back of the elbow, the tip of the elbow also release. Let the upper arms roll from inner arms to outer arms. So the outer arms are rolling more underneath you and releasing the shoulders. And then soften your throat. Let the pit of your throat release. Relax your tongue inside your mouth. Let your jaw release and move towards your ears. Let the cheeks be soft and the eyes quiet. And then soften the skin behind your ears and allow the inner ear to become more circular. And when you're ready to come up, slowly bend your legs one at a time. Put your feet flat on the floor. And then slowly drape your left arm across your chest and roll all the way over onto your right side. Just remain heavy on your right. On your next exhalation, roll more towards the floor. Press your palms down and slowly lift yourself up into a seated position. And on inhalation, lift your chest and lift your head and draw the palms together in front of your heart. And as you inhale, ascend the heart. And as you exhale, surrender the head. Bringing the essence of yoga, the light of yoga, inside yourself. And on the inhalation, lift your head and gazing at the floor in front of you, slowly open your eyes and lift your gaze to look out. Namaste. So I'll be seeing you guys soon.